Team 7 has essentially been the pillar of Konoha since its formation. For the duration of that time, however, Sasuke was not a part of it. Team 7 was mostly a two-man team, one which really changed when Sai appeared to become part of it. Because of Team 7, the Scourge of the Ten Tails was defeated, though they can't solely take credit for it. But what they can solely take credit for is the defeat of Kaguya, which essentially saved the world. But it was a rocky road to this moment, plagued with danger and loss. The greatest loss to them being Sasuke's defection. Sasuke was close to Team 7, really close. And for a time, he almost chose to stay with them instead of searching for the power to destroy Itachi. Sasuke was caught between a rock and a hard place. Friends or enemies? Love or hate? Well, how about we give Sasuke his cake and let him eat it too? You know the drill. Let's get this started. Welcome to the Amagi. Before we begin, we publish a new video every day, so be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. The Amagi's reach stretches beyond just this channel, so if you're a fan of us, please consider subscribing to our other channels and following us on all of our social media. Help us reach our goal of passing 100,000 followers on all of our accounts by the end of the year. We'll start this story at about the time when Sasuke gets his rear handed to him by the Sound 4. Around now, he had been stuck. He loved Team 7, but he needed revenge. He almost couldn't choose. This was the one point in time where his resolve to end Itachi was shaken the most. So for a moment, let's say he tells Sakura and Naruto about it. Tell them of the opportunity and his desire. Now we know Naruto and Sakura normally wouldn't go for this, but let's tweak their personality a bit and say that they decide to help him. Knowing how much Sasuke desires this, Team 7 would decide to escape the village with him. Leaving at night, they would tell no one. That being said, they would no longer have to worry about the Sasuke recovery team as it was Sakura informing Tsunade that got the team put together. The Sound 4 would still put Sasuke into a jar to finish his curse marks completion, but they wouldn't be in any big hurry. They'd eventually make it to Orochimaru's hideout. Being led in, they'd meet up with Kabuto Yakashi, who would be surprised at the least to see the entirety of Team 7 joining Sasuke. He would take them to Orochimaru, who considered this surprise to be a welcome one. Now, not only did he have an Uchiha, but a tailed beast, and a promising up-and-coming medical nin, with which to share theories, perform experiments, and otherwise take advantage of in hopes of extending the life of his current body. But of course, this is where the time skip occurs. Not much happens during this time that has been recorded for the series. On this side of the story, there is merely one filler arc, but why not? Let's follow it. Maybe it's not canon, but it'll most certainly make for some good storytelling. Team 7 has been training for two years, and they're sent to deliver some research material to one of Orochimaru's bases. There, he and Team 7 will meet Karin and Suigetsu, the later of which they secretly free, and the former of which they help recapture. It's here that Karin discovers her crush on Sasuke, though this creates friction between her and Sakura, though Karin also seems rather taken with Naruto after learning that he is an Uzumaki as well. Sasuke then tells Team 7 his plans of adding these two to their ranks when they manage to kill Orochimaru. From here on, they return and continue training. Now we get into the Shippuden era. The world will obviously change now that Team 7 has defected. Let's see what happens. The first arc to follow would be the Kazakage rescue arc. Now, Team Guy goes, but Team 7 does not. Due to this, it means that Konkuro would die from the poison in his system as Sakura is not there to heal him. Beyond this, Gara is also killed and remains dead as nobody's there to save him. Both Deidara and Sasori also escape the exchange and nobody is informed of the Tenchi bridge meeting planned between Sasori and Kabuto. However, it is a trap. Sasuke would remain at the base. However, Orochimaru would enlist Naruto, who he's currently treating as an enforcer, to follow them from behind as they plan to betray Sasori. Sasori would show up to the bridge and Orochimaru would appear with Kabuto. They'd quickly attempt to attack Sasori, but when he fights back, Naruto would appear from the trees utilizing the version 2 cloak he managed to learn during his training with Orochimaru. With this power, he would manage to shatter Hiroko. From within, however, came a new form, the form of a teenage boy, though his true age was in his 30s. It was itself another puppet, and that thing started pulling out weapons like a Swiss army knife. As they continued to fight, Orochimaru began to analyze Sasori and further come up with a plan. He would mention that Sasori was functionally immortal. He would state his admiration of the design and technique, but he would still further liken him to a snail. While the outside is hard and replaceable, there's still a gooey center to it that can easily be destroyed. He would inform Naruto to focus primarily on the area of the heart. All teamed up against him, they would manage to pierce his heart and send him falling from the bridge, which to this point had only miraculously stayed suspended over the river. Orochimaru would congratulate Naruto on a job well done, and they would return to their secret base, where they would plan to move to another secret headquarters to keep out of the eyes of the Akatsuki. During their time training with Orochimaru, Naruto would find some kinship with another young boy named Yukimaru, who had the ability to summon forth the Three Tails and control his power. 
Kabuto would apologize to Team 7 for the interruption. However, Orochimaru would later decide to test their strength. For Sasuke, he had him face off against 1,000 warriors and defeat them alone, single-handedly, without killing any of them. Sasuke did this easily. But as for Naruto, Orochimaru had another plan. He had Naruto and Yukimaru come together for a battle. He told Yukimaru to summon the Three Tails and have Naruto fight it. Yukimaru would do so, summoning Isobu. Meanwhile, Naruto, having had some procedures done himself, is slowly gaining control over the Ninetales, and right now is to be the true test to see how far he's come. Naruto knows that the only way to beat this requires him to summon Kurama, so he summons the Ninetales. Naruto possesses red irises with fox slits for pupils much like Kurama does. As he stands there, it becomes clear that he possesses a secondary seal on his stomach over the first. This seal was specifically designed by Orochimaru to aid in controlling the tailed beast mind as opposed to only its chakra. So far, it seems like the new seal formula works perfectly. Together with Kurama, Naruto begins to face off against Isobu, who Yukimaru is managing to control due to a type of pill he's prescribed by Orochimaru himself. The Three Tails and the Nine Tails battle for a time, but it's obvious who's stronger when it comes down to it. The Nine Tails manages to defeat the Three Tails. Orochimaru is pleased. Orochimaru tasks Naruto to learn how to make better use of the Nine Tails now that he's been gifted complete control over the beast. Naruto vows to do so. Back on the Konoha side of the story, Kakashi is surprised to see how far his team took the those who break the rules are scum, but those who leave their friends behind are worse than scum philosophy. After the death of Gara, the Hidden Leaf began to hunt for Akatsuki members. Hidan and Kakazu were the ones they found, and Asuma's team engaged them in battle. I'm sure you remember how that went. Following the death of Asuma, Kakashi joins Team 10 to deal with the Akatsuki members. Now, this doesn't actually change. Naruto showed up and demonstrated his new technique in the original timeline, however, we do know that Kakashi could beat Kakazu with his Monkyakyo Sharingan, and would have if Naruto hadn't shown up, so it's more than likely that the result remains the same. After this, Naruto would be sent to keep up with Guren and Yukimaru. Together with them, he would follow Kabuto to do tests with Yukimaru's power. He had him consume pills to increase his power and control over the Three Tails, but the strain is almost too much and causes Yukimaru to pass out, allowing the Three Tails to go on a rampage. Naruto, with his Nine Tails and Guren, manage to fight the beast off, defending Yukimaru from it until he can recover. They then take him somewhere to rest, where the bond with Yukimaru and Guren deepens further into something resembling a mother-son relationship, something Naruto is slightly jealous of. They decide to track down the Three Tails and try again. Yukimaru manages to hold the beast back with his power for a while, but it breaks free once more. However, Yukimaru is captured by Konoha Ninja, whom he tries to help capture the beast. He was captured once again, but this time by the reanimated puppet of Kabuto, known as Rinji. He convinces Yukimaru to take more of the pills to help him control the tailed beast. He managed to bring the full tailed beast to them, but quickly collapses, but he was caught by Guren. Rinji then informs Yukimaru of the truth. Guren had killed his mother. This shocks Naruto. Guren acknowledges it as the truth. Meanwhile, Kabuto was intentionally manipulating their emotions in an effort to get Yukimaru to release his true strength to control the Three Tails. And it works. His emotions breaking his limits, Yukimaru screams out in anger and sorrow, and with this power, summons Isobu to the area and proceeds to use it in a fury to kill Guren, which Naruto decides to stop. He summons his Nine Tails to defend Guren from the Three Tails attacks, but this is the completed version of what Yukimaru had done during Naruto's test, so it's far more challenging. The battle drags on for a while, but they manage to drive off the Three Tails. However, Yukimaru has perished in the battle after overspending his chakra. Guren would lament his death, and at this point, she would leave the organ organization for good. Naruto laments this. He also knows that this was surely Orochimaru's doing, but he doesn't do anything about it yet. He knows it's important that he controls his temper. Naruto's changed from what you remember, right? And so he controls himself, knowing that soon he'll get to release all of that rage back on Orochimaru and kill him. And that day is coming soon. Sooner than he expects. Eventually, Sasuke, Naruto, and even Sakura decide that there is nothing left for them to learn from Orochimaru, and they decide to kill him. The three of them would step in while Orochimaru was in bed. Orochimaru would ask what they're doing in there, and Sasuke would respond with an attack meant to kill Orochimaru. However, Orochimaru takes his true form and attacks back. Team 7 all together manage to defeat and kill him before he can take over Sasuke. At this point, Orochimaru doesn't even get to attempt to transfer his soul. I mean, it wouldn't work if he did have the chance, but he doesn't, so it really doesn't work now. Before they leave, they recruit Suigetsu, and after leaving, they go to another base where they recruit Karin as well but only after freeing the prisoners. They then go to free Jugo from one last base of operations, where they all must face off against a bunch of escaped curse mark test subjects. Once they manage to defeat them, Sasuke proves that he can control Jugo, even if he gets angry and they all leave. After gathering supplies, they name their little team Heavy, and he announces the sole mission is to find and kill Itachi. 
As they leave, they're encountered by Tobi and Deidara, the latter of which attacks them. Sasuke, Naruto, and Sakura face off against Deidara. They manage to defeat him, but the artist decides to go the way of Van Gogh and make art out of himself. Deidara blows himself up and nearly takes them with him, but they manage to survive it through sacrificing Manda and escape. They would duck into an Akatsuki base that Jugo showed them, where they would be confronted by Itachi, who, upon being stabbed, reveals that he's merely a crow clone and gives them his true location. Team 7 would go along with Sasuke there, but in the end he would state that he needs to face Itachi alone. They know that this is Sasuke's dream and that he would die for it. In the end though, Naruto can't just let Sasuke go alone, so he adds some of the Nine Tails energy to Sasuke secretly and lets him go in. Meanwhile, in Konoha, word reaches that Team 7 has killed Orochimaru and they now know that this is the perfect time to go and get them. However, as they draw closer, they're slowed down by the Akatsuki, chief of which is Tobi. Meanwhile, Sasuke battles against Itachi. Most of this actually goes the same until Sasuke is faced with Itachi's Susano. Sasuke doesn't have anything with which to fight against this and he's already low on energy, having used up all the energy Naruto gave him. It's then that Sasuke realizes that he wasn't strong enough and that he couldn't do it without his teammates. And it's now that Naruto and Sakura show up. Naruto begins to use his Nine Tails to fight against Itachi while Sakura heals Sasuke and gets him to full power. Naruto faces off against Itachi's Susano, and despite Itachi's power, the Nine Tails has him basically dead to rights because Itachi is both sick and weakened. Eventually, Itachi's Susano fades, and Sasuke would approach. He would look down. This is the benefit of having a clan. He would tell Itachi before finishing him off. It would be then that Tobi arrives. Good work, Sasuke, he would say in that glorious, moderate impersonation that made me love this version of Obito so much. He would go on to inform them all of the truth. Who was really behind the downfall of the Uchiha? The truth would really shake Sasuke, and it would startle Naruto and Sakura. Sasuke would end up awakening his Mangekyo Sharingan from the situation. Naruto would remain distrustful, however. Tobi is an Akatsuki member, and these have been taking tailed beasts and killing Jinchuriki, of which Naruto is one. The thing about this, however, is Sasuke also knows this, so he refuses to join Tobi under request from Naruto. Due to this, a few things change. Hebi, later Taka, never go to Kumogakure to take the Eight Tails, but because Naruto is also in the group, Pain never goes to Konoha. Instead, Pain goes to Kumo, where he proceeds to eradicate the village and everyone in it, including the Raikage, and take the Eight Tails for himself. Tobi attempts to take the Nine Tails from Naruto, but due to the help Naruto receives from Taka, he survives and escapes. With the destruction of Kumo, a Five Kage Summit, technically Four Kage Summit, is called. Tsunade would attend along with the rest of the Kage. There we would find that Tamari is the Kazakage. However, Sasuke would be targeting Tsunade due to her being the Hokage. Naruto and Sakura, however, would not be as keen on this plan. This would cause a schism between Sasuke and the rest of Team 7. After all, Tsunade was the woman Naruto himself recruited with Jiraiya, and Sakura respected her as well. Not as much as she did in the original timeline, given that she hasn't trained under her, or have nearly as much experience with her, but she would still disagree. Sasuke, as such, would go by himself. Well, by himself is a bit of a lie. He would take the rest of Team Taka with him. Getting in would be easier, but fighting Tsunade would not be so easy. That being said, in the battle against Tsunade, I feel that Sasuke wouldn't stand a chance. There's no chance on earth that Sasuke could beat Tsunade. I mean, she doesn't have Danzo's Izanagi, however, she does have the creation rebirth technique, which can literally allow her to regenerate the lower half of her body without dying. Her strength is also known as an ultimate defense breaker, meaning Sasuke's as of yet unfinished Susana would likely not defend him. And as for the Amaterasu, I don't expect her to be slow enough to get hit. And if she does manage to get struck with Amaterasu, she could always pull a Raikage and just sever the limb and recreate it through her creation rebirth technique. Her strength is also out of this world. I believe her to be in a totally different league than Sasuke. Danzo was strong, but it was mostly his techniques that gave him the edge. And the moment Izanagi failed, he was helpless. Tsunade will never reach that point, so if anything, he gets beaten and is either forced to retreat at best, or at worst, gets captured. I doubt Tsunade would kill Sasuke. Doesn't seem like her style. That being said, while Sasuke and Taka are away, Tobi would come out to play. And by play, I mean kill Naruto and take the Ninetales out of his husk. Well, that's what he would try to do at least. Truth be told though, at Naruto's current strength, I don't really see him or Sakura being able to counter Kamui. So with that, Naruto probably gets stomped and Kurama is probably taken from him. This would result in the death of Naruto. Sasuke would be taken back to Konoha where he would be imprisoned by Tsunade and interrogated. Explaining his motivations and that he is not with the Akatsuki, he's merely standing against Konoha of his own will. And while this definitely doesn't earn him freedom, he's being held in sympathy by Tsunade enough not to kill him. Though the sentiment isn't shared by Danzo, the Shadow Hokage. 
Sasuke would likely fend off attacks at night, attempting to take his eyes, but that doesn't mean Sasuke will lose them. Sakura, all by herself, would rally Taka in an attempt to free Sasuke, and given the various abilities of the team, it does seem possible. Using Karin, they could find Sasuke easily, and with Suigetsu's watery body, he could easily slip in undetected. Once in, he can break Sasuke out. And while Sasuke is being broken out, Jugo can go wild with his Sage Transformation, just blasting things to smithereens with pure chakra like he did with the Raikage. Boy, I love that scene. Jugo is a treasure. Sasuke would be pulled out, and then Sakura would tell him about how Naruto was killed. This would put a rage in his heart against the Akatsuki. At this point, the war is already going full steam ahead. Sasuke decides that he and Team Taka should join in. He can destroy Konoha anytime, but he can only destroy the Akatsuki right now. So he heads for the front lines where he would find Itachi. He would attempt to stop Itachi, but Itachi is under Kabuto's control. Now, the issue is in deciding if he would ever put his crow in anyone. You see, when Itachi heard that Naruto had saved Sasuke in the main timeline, he gave Naruto the crow that possessed Shisui's eye. But that doesn't happen here. Now, does Itachi still know what will go down? Will he plant an eye in anyone? The only people he could have planted it in at this time are Naruto, Sasuke, and Sakura. That's because he didn't meet anyone else close to Sasuke until the final battle between brothers in this timeline. Sakura wouldn't get it because she's just a medical nin who didn't even approach Itachi, but if Itachi could see this coming in the past, I don't see why it would change. Someone would have the crow, and if Naruto died while in possession of it, it would go to someone else eventually, so given the circumstances, I assume Sasuke can and would free Itachi from his mind control. Together, they would face Kabuto, just like before, and the end result would remain the same. Itachi would explain his motivations, and so Sasuke would seek to know what it really means to be a shinobi. And to that end, he must bring Orochimaru back to life, who can reanimate the previous four Hokage to ask. And they do so. Furthermore, Sasuke would bring Naruto back to life using this jutsu. Together, they would make off for the battlefield where they would immediately face the Ten Tails. Naruto at this point is having some father-son bonding time in battle, and Team 7 is reunited. And they're definitely going to need this, as we have Nagato standing atop the Ten Tails alongside Madara Uchiha and Obito Uchiha. And I will be frank with you, Obito's fighting ability was limited when he got the Ten Tails. Yes, he was physically stronger, but before that, his only threat was Kakashi. So if he had killed Kakashi, or at least reclaimed his eye, he would have been untouchable. So as it stands, even with all of Team 7 unified, and the allied shinobi forces all standing together, this is a tall order indeed. It's not impossible though. In life, Madara was also beaten single-handedly by Hashirama, and the same should occur in death. Minato also beat Obito in the past, though Obito by this time would have grown even stronger, so it might not remain the same. Well, actually that's wrong. Minato might still win, because right now he has something he didn't previously a tailed beast within him, so he might be able to deal with it. And if Kakashi has already understood the secret to Obito's ability, then he further has a chance to beat him. As for Nagato, well, Naruto never learned sage mode and he's lost his tailed beast. He may have trained with Orochimaru and that surely counts for something, but I doubt it makes him sage mode level in base. Sasuke, on the other hand, would be, and together I'm certain that they could deal with Nagato. In the end, Black Zetsu would force Nagato to revive Madara, who would then claim the Ritigod and become the Ten Tails Jinchuriki. The battle then goes a bit differently from here on out. Naruto would be unable to heal Might Guy, who would die. Naruto also only has half of the Nine Tails if it's donated to him by Minato. All that being said, it's not looking good for our heroes. The question then arises once more if Naruto can even receive Six Paths Chakra while being an Ido Tensei. Given that Naruto never learned Sage Mode, can Naruto even enter Six Paths Sage Mode? Sasuke would definitely receive the Rinnegan, but could they ever really beat Madara like this? Realistically, no. Naruto has neither bonded with any tailed beast or his Jinchuriki, hasn't earned their trust, only has half of the nine tails, doesn't have sage mode, and wouldn't know what to do with Six Paths Chakra if it bit him on the ass. That is, if he can even get Six Paths Chakra from Hagoromo. As it stands, Naruto just doesn't possess the power or speed to deal with any of this. Even if we killed Madara now and awakened Kaguya, Naruto isn't strong enough or fast enough to touch her with his sun seal, and Sasuke can't beat her alone. I just don't think they can win because Naruto would not have the proper equipment and knowledge with which to supplant her. I mean, if you wanted, I could tell a nice little happy ending in which Naruto manages to touch her and the world is saved and then he goes to heaven while the world is at peace under Hokage Sasuke. Or I can tell you the truth and say, everyone dies and Kaguya takes back all of her chakra from the inhabitants of the world. Take your pick. 
Anyways, what did you think of this video? I know the ending was depressing, but in all honesty, the perfect ending that Shippuden experienced was based solely upon past experience. And without past experiences, Naruto wouldn't grow the same way. Remember, to keep up with Sasuke, who just naturally grows stronger along with his dojutsu, Naruto requires techniques and transformations, half of which he'll never achieve due to following Sasuke, whose path was tailored specifically for him. Naruto is just a different beast altogether and can't grow the same by following Sasuke's path. But that's just my two sense. If your opinion differs, I'd love to hear about it. Tell me why you think I'm wrong, and tell me your idea of how this would end. Also, feel free to like the video and subscribe to support the channel. Ring the bell to be notified when a new video drops. Peace out.